You may not be uh, familiar with the name Jamie Lopez. I certainly wasn't until this week when she died, but her death is worth discussing, whether you'd heard of her or not before uh, before now. Lopez was the founder of a well-known beauty salon called Baby Doll Beauty Couture, and she was the star of a reality show called Super Size Salon. Now, as the title of the show indicates, the salon was focused on providing services to obese people, uh, proudly billing itself as the world's first plus-sized salon. Lopez herself was a plus-size model, and uh, as media reports about her death have characterized her, she was a, quote, fierce advocate of fat acceptance and body positivity. Her show and her public brand centered around the basic message that everyone is beautiful no matter their size, and we should accept and celebrate all body types. She was only 37 when she died this week. They've not released a confirmed cause of death, but the Daily Mail and other outlets report that she was suffering from heart complications, among other potential maladies. Now, there's a reason why I bring this all up. But before I flesh that out, it may be enlightening to watch a brief sneak peek of the Super Size Salon show, which was posted on uh, WeTV's YouTube channel a few months ago to promote the show. And the problems we're going to talk about are all illustrated, I think, very explicitly in this clip. And here it is. I've just always loved beautiful things. It's just a part of me. I've been doing makeup since I was 13 years old. I just have always just loved making women feel beautiful. Oh my God. I am a social media influencer in the plus size community. I want to inspire big girls all over the world. This is what I manifest every single day. Jamie in the big girl community is like an icon. She's very beautiful, confident. She is really a goat. Jamie's just a fabulous Amazon. She loves to just see people happy. You're gorgeous. It's so cute. <laughs> I am the owner and creator and the HBIC of Baby Doll Beauty Couture. Welcome to Baby Doll. Welcome to Baby my dream was to create the first ever all-inclusive salon by plus-size girls for plus-size girls. You're in good hands. Society makes you hate yourself if you don't look a certain way. And I am damn determined to change that. Baby doll is about embracing who you are. Yes, girl. You might have fat ass people come to your salon, but you don't have a plus-size salon when cheers for big asses like ours. All this. It's for all it is. So it's a message that's uh, a sermon that we hear all the time in our culture. We should not make obese people feel bad about themselves. Everyone is beautiful. Fat is beautiful. Everyone should be accepted. All weights, all sizes. Um, indeed, fatness is now its very own identity group. There is, as we heard in the clip there, a, a community, a sisterhood of fat women. And this community deserves to be included and tolerated, even as they kill themselves in front of us. Now, the tragic reality here is that Jamie Lopez was apparently trying to lose weight towards the end of her life. At her heaviest, she had reached 846 pounds and found herself uh, unable, she was bed bound. She was unable to support her own weight enough to move around without assistance. And, and she had apparently dropped a significant amount of weight, I think maybe like half her body weight, but was still you know, 400 pounds, extremely morbidly obese. And it would seem the damage had been done because our bodies are not meant to carry around that kind of weight. Our bones, our internal organs, our, you know, our hearts, none of it was built to support hundreds of pounds of excess fat. That's why morbid obesity will kill you. It's not an if here. There's no if. It's not like a maybe. The, the only thing that will stop a morbidly obese person from dying of their obesity is if they die from something else first or if they lose the weight before the clock runs out. Neither of those two things happen, and they will die of obesity, will, 100% of the time. Um, Jamie Lopez was one of thousands upon thousands of obese people every year who, who perish from the condition. The clock runs out. Something like a quarter of a million Americans die from obesity-related causes every year, which makes up 10% of all obesity-related deaths globally, in spite of the fact that the U.S. only comprises 4% of the global population. Now, Lopez may have tried to lose weight at the end, but she was a part of and, and a victim of also a movement that tells obese people that they don't need to lose weight unless they want to. Like, if you want to, then go ahead, but, but you don't need to. The fat acceptance movement, body positivity, 
has killed countless people in this country. And now it's killed one of its more prominent advocates. And that's the point we should be focusing on. Now, this is not about exploiting, certainly not about making light of a woman's tragic death. It's about c- confronting the fact that the fat acceptance movement, typified by nearly everything you heard in that promotional clip, is a suicidal ideology. I mean, it is a death cult. Fat acceptance is a death cult. It's one of the most dangerous ideas in the world, and that's not an exaggeration. At a time when we're so focused on the alleged harms inflicted by, you know, quote-unquote misinformation, it's probably time that we start thinking about the misinformation that tells people like Jamie Lopez and so many others that morbid suicidal, self-destructive obesity is something to be celebrated, that it's beautiful. Lopez will not be the only body positivity influencer to die an early death. They will almost all suffer the same fate. Fat acceptance became a mainstream phenomenon with its own slate of advocates and stars and influencers in just the past 10 years or so. We're reaching the point now where we might expect to start seeing uh, many of them succumb to their obesity. But then again, if 280,000 obesity-related deaths every single year isn't enough for a wake-up call, I imagine that every single, quote, fat acceptance celebrity could die, and that wouldn't be enough either. Still, whether people want to hear it or not, we need to start speaking some hard truths. Truths, Truths such as this. Obesity is not beautiful. It is, it is not beautiful for the same reason that we don't call alcoholism beautiful or anorexia beautiful. If somebody engages in self-harm and cuts themselves, we don't say that the scars are beautiful. If a crazy guy self-immolates, we don't stand around the fire talking about how pretty the flame is. It's not because we hate the alcoholic, or we hate the anorexic, or we hate the cutter, or we hate the self-immolator. Exactly the opposite. We love them, and therefore we hate what is destroying them. You should hate the things that destroy, or threaten to destroy, the people that you love, including obesity. Now, there some people will undoubtedly criticize me for talking about this right now, only a couple days after the woman died. They'll say that it's exploitative, disrespectful, And yet, if she was a member of the Alcoholism is Beautiful movement and then died of liver disease stemming from alcohol consumption, we would all agree that it would be absurd to not talk about the connection. What else are you going to talk about? To ignore it would be ludicrous, even reckless. The same applies here. Now is not only an acceptable time, but the most important time to point out that there is nothing beautiful about self-destruction. There's nothing beautiful about an early grave. These are ugly, horrid things. They are brutal and grotesque. Fat acceptance as as a movement, as an ideology, is brutal and grotesque. It is a celebration of death. We shouldn't just oppose it and disagree with it. We should hate it. We should hate it for the deadly, sinister propaganda that it is. Now, I think the problem, in part at least, is that we've bought into this this lie that lifestyles are sacrosanct, right? However however a person chooses to live is automatically above reproach simply because they're living that way. To criticize a lifestyle, such as a lifestyle of overeating, gluttony, lethargy, laziness, that is to suggest that a person should live differently from how they're currently living. But that's the ultimate heresy in our culture. Because for us, the, the, the only thing you are meant to say, or that you can say about a person's lifestyle, is that it's courageous and inspirational. Right? We're at a point now where all lifestyles are courageous by default. Simply to live however you feel like living is an act of courage. Whereas to live differently from how you feel like living, to make purposeful changes with the intention of becoming a different sort of person, is somehow an act of self-betrayal. And to encourage others to live differently is bigotry, prejudice, hatred. But this is all nonsense. And it is getting people killed. Lots of people every single day. When will enough be enough? That's the question. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed. (laughs) 